Hi, I'm Brian Allgaier. We're here to talk about Fuse at the EU Showcase for Connected Digital World. At the recent EA Showcase, we got a look at the new game Fuse, which used to be called Overstrike. We also got to talk to Brian Allgaier about the game, and here's the interview. Enjoy. Hi, I'm Brian Allgaier. I'm the creative director on Fuse from Insomniac Games. So tell us a little bit about Fuse. Fuse is a four-player cooperative game that's uh, class-based, so every character has their own unique role on the team. And this is based off of the Fuse weapons that they use. Uh, Fuse is an alien substance that, uh, when combined with earthly materials, is devastating. So we've got Dalton with his mag shield. Uh, essentially, he's the tank of the group, and the mag shield is ferrofluids combined with Fuse. He can create these barriers. He can blast enemies with it. Uh, we've got Naya Devereaux who's got the warp rifle, which is Fuse combined with antimatter. This allows her to create these singularities, which create small black holes that sucks enemies into them. And she can also cloak and go invisible, which is nice in a pinch. And then we've got Izzy Sinclair, who uses her shatter gun to raise enemies up out of cover, uh, and they're crystallized because Fuse is combined with black melanite, which causes crystals, and then other enemies can shatter them. She can heal them from afar, too, which is very helpful. And then we've got Jacob Kimball, who fires uh, his arc shot. And this is a combination of mercury and fuse, which creates these mercury wisps. And when he charges up his bolts, they flame up and will liquefy enemies. So tell us a little bit about Raven. So Raven is this evil paramilitary organization. They've invaded this government base called uh, Hyperion. And that is what's caused the whole base to go, go dark. Uh, essentially, the team comes in to figure out what's going on. They find all of these crazy experiments. And the government hires uh, the Overstrike team to really cover up this mess. They don't want anyone else knowing about it. Uh, Overstrike gets their hands on these weapons, and they have to fight Raven and track them down to ultimately find something called the Fuse Source. Whether they find it or not, we don't know. But essentially, that's what drives the whole story. So you can play single player, two player, three player, and four player. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Sure. You, so you can play Fuse as a single player game, uh, or a two player, three player, or four player game. And it's fun no matter what. Essentially it's a team based experience where you're going to have all four characters with you no matter how you want to play it. What's cool about uh, single player is you get the leap feature. And that allows you to jump into any character at any time. So if I now want to be the long range guy, which is Jacob Kimball, I can jump into him and use the arc shot to take enemies out or I can jump into Naya and Cloak. Uh, and it's also fun if you're playing two-player or a three-player game, because there's always going to be one available bot that you can leap into, and it's a bit of a game of musical chairs. So how long is the game taking to develop? Uh, so uh, we've been developing Fuse for roughly three years now, after wrapping up A Crack in Time in 2009, which is that Ratchet and Clank game. And so uh, essentially uh, we've been developing this new IP, and of course, you know, along the way, it's, goes through various changes and evolutions, which is natural for any new IP. So why change the name from Overstrike to Fuse? Well, uh, once we started to develop Fuse uh, as more of a gameplay feature, because originally it was just a story one, we realized that really to make a game feel very cohesive, you know, it just made more sense to call it Fuse. So this is bigger than just the Overstrike team. This was a global threat that uh, really asks the question, what happens when humans get their hands on this alien substance? So has there been any real challenges that you've faced in developing this game, other than the sort of normal challenges of developing a game? Well, yeah, I mean, there's definitely always challenges, always unique challenges with every game we develop. Uh, you know, with this game in particular, you know, uh, yeah, we, we, we essentially are developing a new IP. Uh, it's a cooperative-based game. We've never developed a cover shooter before. Uh, but those are fun challenges for us because we love making inventive weaponry. We love cooperative games. We've made a lot of cooperative modes in the past. So it was really fun to just focus it all around a story-based campaign and this one unique element. I mean, obviously it's fun playing it for players as we've done today. Um, is it just as fun with one player? Uh, yes, it is. You know, uh, because essentially it creates a different dynamic where you can jump into any character any time with the leap feature. You can figure out how you want to customize and kit out uh, each character and then uh, progress them to determine how you want to use them in an encounter. Okay. So obviously when one character dies, the entire team ends. Yes. Um, how does that work with single player? Well, uh, so, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, essentially, our bots are always are very hardy. They tend to stay alive. 
uh, you're not always having to babysit them. Uh, we've played a lot of games where it's frustrating when, when bots will run in front of you and you'll shoot them or they'll get stuck on something. So we're paying a lot of attention to that. Uh, and, you know, we don't let the bots play the game for you. They'll hang back a lot of times to let the human players get the kills, but they also fill in. So, you know, Izzy will fire out her health beacon to heal people. Dalton will bring up his mag shield for the human players to shoot through. And so we're putting a lot of emphasis on making sure our bots are fun to play. So when you actually play with um, other real players, um, you can actually share points and it, it, obviously when you kill someone you you share in the, the experience points. So how does that work? So you know what's great is that uh, we're not forcing co-op down the player's throat. We're encouraging them by rewarding them. And you know as uh, as you get kills, if you're working together and using your fuse weapons, you're going to get even more points. You're going to be able to upgrade your characters faster, and you're going to be able to trigger fusion mode faster. So you know if you're Izzy and you crystallize some enemies with your shatter gun then uh, Jacob fires at them. Both Jacob and Izzy get points when they shatter. Uh, and this works for like two, three, or four players. So Jacob, for instance, could, uh, well, yeah, we'll sort of bring up the uh, Izzy example again. Izzy could crystallize a bunch of enemies. Uh, Dalton could be, bring up his mag shield. And then we could have Jacob and Nia behind the mag shield. They could all uh, fire at it, shattering the enemies, and everyone gets points. There's quite a uh, diverse skill tree in this game. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Sure. So there's uh, mo there's multiple tracks uh, for our progression tree. We've got survival, which uh, increases your uh, survival abilities. You can buff your heroes up and give them, make them more resilient to damage. We've got your, your weapons track, where you can upgrade your standard weaponry. Like, for instance, Dalton's preferred weapon is the burst rifle, so that's something you can improve. Uh, and then we've got your fuse weapon. So as you're earning XP, you can pick how you want to improve your fuse weapon, your standard weapons, or your innate survival skills. And when will the game be out? It's going to be out in spring 2013 for the um, Xbox and PlayStation 3. Thank you very much. Thank you.